The scripture reading today is from Luke chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Jesus and his disciples sailed to the Gerasenes land, which is across the lake from Galilee. As soon as Jesus got out of the boat, a certain man met him. The man was from a city and was possessed by demons. For a long time he had lived among the tombs naked and homeless. When he saw Jesus, he shrieked and fell down before him, and then he shouted, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, don't torture me. He said this because Jesus had already commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. Many times it had taken possession of him so that he would be bound with leg irons and chains and placed under guard, but he would break his restraints and the demon would force him into the wilderness. Jesus asked him, What is your name? Legion, he replied, because many demons had entered him. They pleaded with him not to order them to go back into the abyss. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the hillside. The demons begged Jesus to let them go into the pigs. Jesus gave them permission, and the demons left the man and entered the pigs. The herd rushed down the cliff on, into the lake and drowned. When those who tended the pigs saw what happened, they ran away and told the story in the city and in the countryside. People came to see what happened. They came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone. He was sitting at Jesus' feet, fully dressed and completely sane. They were filled with awe. Those people who had actually seen what had happened told him how the, dis the demon-possessed man had been delivered. Then everyone gathered from the region of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave their area because they were overcome with fear. So he got into the boat and returned across the lake. The man from whom the demons had gone begged to come along with Jesus as one of his disciples. Jesus sent him away, saying, Return home and tell the story of what God has done for you. So he went throughout the city, proclaiming what Jesus had done for him. Will you pray with me? O oh Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Amen. Racism doesn't exist. Mental illness is just a spiritual problem of the weak. Climate change isn't r real, it's a hoax. Poor people should just work harder. Homelessness isn't really a problem. Police brutality is too rare to matter. Gun control laws aren't going to stop mass shootings. And are they finally going to admit that this coronavirus isn't as dangerous as they say it is? You know, some things in life are so hard to deal with that when they arise, we respond by pushing them aside and trying to ignore them and hoping that by ignoring them, these problems will go away. I think this is particularly true of us as Christians, and certainly it's true for me. I, I would really rather often think about good things in life and not be constantly fretting about all of the bad stuff going on. That's, of course, more difficult than ever before to ignore problems, but I still try to do it. I still try to just think happy thoughts each day, I say to myself. We just want to pretend that all these things that are dominating the news aren't really happening, or that they're happening, but they're not really as much of a problem as people say they are. And if we do acknowledge that there are problems, we sure as heck don't have the solution, and we just assume that no one does, and we feel hopeless in the face of them. And so again, we ignore them. We push them aside, saying, well, it may be a problem, but there's no solution, so we might as well just get used to it. We continue to push problems into the corner in hopes that they will disappear eventually, out of sight, out of mind, right? This is exactly what the people called the Gerasenes did with a problem going on in their community. They had a mentally ill neighbor. They didn't know uh, how to define it in that way at these time, in those times, but they, they talked about him as a madman, a demon-possessed man, a lunatic, and they had pushed him 
to into living naked and homeless in the cemetery, out of sight, out of mind. Because first century Gerasenes, even though they didn't know that he was suffering from mental illness because it wasn't a thing then, they didn't know what mental illness was, they knew there's got to be something wrong with this guy. He shrieks, he acts unpredictably, he makes up names for himself, he talks about being possessed by demons, and, and, and he is so uncontrollable that we've chained him down in the cemetery where we don't have to deal with him anymore. They made the problem go away, or so they thought. But that man still existed. You can almost hear them saying, as you read the text, that read the story, you can almost hear those garrisons saying, well, what are we supposed to do? This is the only way we know how to deal with it. Just push him off to the side, and that way we can go on with our lives. This man possessed by demons was most likely a first century definition of what we now call schizophrenia. He took one look at Jesus as Jesus entered into town, and he knew that Jesus was different. He knew that Jesus would not ignore the problem like everyone else was doing. He was going to do something about it. What have you to do with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? That's what he said. What do you have to do with me? I beg you, don't torture me. He knew that Jesus was not just going to ignore him and hope he goes away. And he made sure that Jesus was aware that he was there. You know, when we just can't handle it anymore, violence, hatred, pandemics, protests, gun control debates, mental illness, domestic violence, climate change, and on and on and on, our tendency is to push it all aside to tune out, to log out, to ignore all of the challenges of today until they fade from our memory tomorrow and cease to be problems at all. And like the Gerasenes, I find that it's easier to sleep at night if I can just ignore the evil in our midst. So in my own way, I do the same. I push those evils out to the cemetery where I never go in hopes that these problems will eventually disappear. But I think you know the truth that I have discovered. They don't go away. Ignoring problems is never a permanent solution. That's the lesson the Gerasenes learn when Jesus pulls this madman out of the cemetery and confronts this evil head on. He casts it out of the man. He, he you know, hilariously to us as we read it, casts the demons into pigs who clumsily run off a cliff. Think about all that wasted bacon. It's a, it's, a, it's a darn shame, isn't it? The problem is solved only when Jesus creates a confrontation with evil rather than ignoring it as everyone else does. Let me say that again. The problem is solved only when Jesus creates a confrontation with evil rather than ignoring it as everyone else does. You know, when you really think about it, this is a pretty simple lesson because my mom taught me that when I was young, she taught me that ignoring a dirty bedroom will only work for so long. It won't eventually clean itself. Eventually, you have to walk into it and go to bed at night. Eventually, you will have to show her that it's clean. And she used to teach me that ignoring my homework just doesn't make it go away or doesn't make it accomplish itself. Sooner or later, you're going to have to turn it in. And so ignoring it doesn't solve the problem. Now as we become adults, the problems change. Homework becomes broken doorknobs and burned out lights and leaky roofs. Ignoring our problems doesn't work. We have to figure out a way to get things working again. Ignoring our problems might make us feel better for a moment, or even a day or a week. But I think we all know that in general, ignoring a problem only makes the problem worse. And so if that's true of home repairs and required tasks from school or work, then I would say it's infinitely more true when it comes to societal problems and the problems of evil in our world. 
Now look, I get it. These are monumental issues. We can't even agree on the problems to start, right? Is the coronavirus dangerous or not? Is it really a problem? Is police brutality a widespread problem or is it just an exception to the norm? Do black lives matter or do blue lives matter? Or can both matter or do all lives matter? Are, are all these protests peaceful or violent? Is climate change even real? Remember what the demons within the madman said to Jesus? Our name is Legion for we are many. COVID-19, 100,000 deaths and counting, economic recession, struggling businesses and churches. Governor Wolf and state legislators here in Pennsylvania fighting with each other about the response. Our name is Legion, for we are many. Black Lives Matter, protests both peaceful and violent, police officers being attacked, stores being looted, cries to be seen as fully human from people who are not yet seen as fully human, police brutality disproportionately happening among people of color, calls for police reform or dismantling police forces. Our name is Legion for we are many. Mental illness, the opo opioid e epidemic, domestic violence, sexual abuse, gun violence and mass shootings, poverty and homelessness. Our name is Legion, for we are many. Every time we're faced with evil in this world, we cringe, we're uncomfortable, and we hope that things can be better, and we want things to be better. And because we feel so helpless and hopeless in the face of insurmountable problems, we tend to cope in the same way every time by trying our best to just not dwell on the problem. If we just ignore it and hope that when we wake up tomorrow it'll be gone, then maybe one day we'll be surprised and that will be true. But remember, ignoring a problem doesn't make it go away. I mean, it does for a time but ultimately it makes the problem get worse. Jesus confronts the evils that we push aside. He refuses to ignore problems. He won't let them fester off in the corner, off on the edge of town in the cemetery where we put everything that we don't want to deal with. Jesus will keep confronting the demons of this world until pigs fly, quite literally in this case, as pigs run off a cliff. In our baptismal covenant service as United Methodists, there's a part of the liturgy called renunciation of sin and profession of faith. And if someone is being baptized or confirmed as a teenager or an adult, they make this profession for themselves. If a baby is being baptized, the parents profess this to the child's behalf. And this is my favorite question, the second one. The question is, do you accept the freedom and power God gives you? to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I just love this idea that we are called to actively resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. In whatever forms they present themselves, our name is Legion, for we are many. Jesus' actions in the Gerasene Cemetery convict me even today. Because I so desperately want to wish away and pray away all the problems and evils of this world and just hope that if I go to bed tonight with earnest prayers in my heart for a better tomorrow, that when I wake up tomorrow, they'll be gone. But our call, I believe, is not simply to pray for the end of these problems and all of our problems. Though that is a good thing to do, we ought to pray for them to go away. The story reminds us that we must allow our prayers to motivate us into action. Our call, I would say even more strongly, our responsibility or obligation as people of faith, people who claim to follow Jesus, is to do just as he has done, 
to confront the problems head on. To listen and say, tell me, what is your problem? What is it that's possessing you? What evil is weighing you down and oppressing you? What legion has a hold of you and is keeping you in chains? We are called to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. And if we are committed members of the United Methodist Church, we have made that proclamation that we will do so. And resisting is different than ignoring. We all know that ignoring a problem doesn't make it go away, and it's only when we confront problems head on, even as uncomfortable as it makes us to do so, that those problems can, be, can begin to be driven out of our communities. Right now, in this very moment, we must confront the problem of racism head on. We must confront the problem of this pandemic head on. It's not gonna, neither of these things are gonna go away unless we actively resist. Their name is Legion. There are many demons among us. There is much evil to be confronted head on rather than ignored and pushed to the places where we'd rather not go. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.